In this video I'll demonstrate how to create a correlation table using Microsoft Word. And as my rule set, I'm going to be using the 7th edition APA publication manual so that we produce a table that is perfectly in accord with expectations about APA style. So you can see here I've got uh, an example table and this is a screenshot from page 215 of the publication manual. My goal is to recreate this table in its entirety perfectly in APA style. Of course I won't have these little blue boxes. The first step is to count the number of columns and rows. So as you can see there's a column for the variables and then we have a second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven total columns. And then for the rows we need a row for the headers and then we have seven variables in all. So there are 11 columns and 8 rows. So let's create a correlation table. See I've got my title already set up. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the insert tab here in Word and click on the table function. Now, When you drag the mouse cursor across the table function you can see that it populates with a table of the desired size. Although we want 11 columns and you can see that it doesn't go up to 11. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to click the insert table function here. And we get a pop-up menu. And here we can specify the number of columns. We want 11 columns. And the number of rows. We want 8 rows. So now we've got our table set up. You see that it's blank and it's rather skinny. It's rather uh, narrow in, in height. So we're going to need to increase the height. And also we're going to need to input all the information here. So in order to save time, what I've done is I've inputted all the information here. And you can see that this table is really kind of not very good. So we need to format it. Let's start by reducing the font size. If you click anywhere on the table, you see that there's a little button here that becomes highlighted. And so with that button highlighted, if you click that button, then you can highlight the entire table at once. So I'm going to change the font size. I tested out a few different options, and in order to make it work well on the page, I need to reduce the font size to 10. So it's you can see it's a little bit more manageable now, but the but you can see that the left-hand column is still too narrow. And so I'm going to need to increase the width of that column. So to get this to uh, operate, I need to uh, just stretch it over a little bit. And I'm going to do this by eye uh, first. And I'm, you know what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to create enough space so that the words in that first column don't have to go onto a second line. And you can see that as I pull these over, they get squunched up rather a lot, uh, and it looks pretty bad, but I'm going to fix it up. So I'm continuing to manipulate moving these over, and for the most part that's pretty good. There's uh, There are three different uh, sections here where you can see that the, the words wrap over into a second line. That may be unavoidable. Um, let's highlight all the remaining columns and I'm going to equalize the column width. So with those columns highlighted, if you right click, now you can, uh, in the pop-up, click the button that, or click the function that says distribute columns evenly. So now that looks a little bit better, but it's still not quite right. And I need a little bit more space here. That's It's just not enough space, even with 10-point font. So I don't have any choice, really. I'm going to have to move this over a little bit. I'm going to have to have double lines in those words. And so uh, sometimes it is just an issue of trial and error. There, that looks pretty good. Okay, the next step is that I need to change the um, the borders. I need to make the borders invisible. 
So with the entire table highlighted, I go to um, uh, Table Design, and you can see that there's the Borders function over here. Click that, and I tell it that I don't want any borders. No borders at all. Open Borders. That's not right either, because APA style calls for top and bottom borders. And so now we've inserted the top and bottom borders up here, one at a time. Good. It's starting to look right. Now we highlight the column headers, the row that has all the column headers in it. And we go back to the borders function and click the bottom border. And now you have an APA style table. And it matches perfectly from the table on the previous page. So let me get rid of this one. Bring that new table up to fit next to my title. And you can see if I reduce the page size, you can see that it's a uh, pretty good match. And that is, well, it looks like I'm missing part of it because it's on the next page. Now here's a word of advice, and this is actually a good point. When you're putting together a manuscript, you never want your page uh, to cross in the middle of a table. So whenever possible, and this is, uh, this is not a manuscript, of course, but whenever possible, you would want to have that table appear uh, underneath the text, but without wrapping to a next uh, to the next page. And if necessary, then you can use the page break function, or insert some additional text here, in order to keep that table in one piece on a single page. So that is an APA style table for correlations. Thanks for watching.